Hello, welcome to Notes to My Legal Self. Together, we explore topics of interest to in-house lawyers. We cover career, practice tips, leadership, the future of law, mental health, legal tech, and much, much more. Know someone who'd make a great guest? Let us know. Self-nominations are encouraged. They're an act of courage. Want to get the most from this conversation? Ask questions, comment, like, follow, say hello. In short, engage. Finally, have fun. In-house legal practice is a serious business, but you don't have to take yourself seriously. Let's begin. Here's your host, Olga Matt. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you. I'm really excited about today's conversations. We're going to focus on legal operations. I've been talking about legal operations now for a while. I've been practicing some of it. I've been serving this community. And today I have a guest who I've been doing it as well. So I anticipate that we will have a lot of fun. And without further ado, Sarah, welcome to the Notes to My Legal Self. I am so excited for you to be here. Please introduce yourself. Hey, Olga, how are you doing today? (laughs) <laughs> I am great. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me today. I'm so excited and so happy to be here. So, yeah, of course, I will introduce myself. So, as you say, the, my name is Sarah. Uh, I am originally from Morocco and uh, I moved uh, with my family to Canada like about three years ago, where we lived in Toronto first and then we moved to Ottawa. So now I am currently living in Ottawa. Uh, I used to be in house uh, legal counsel in Morocco, my home country, for more than five years. And uh, now, like after I moved to Canada, I worked as the in house, uh, I as sorry, a paralegal and board uh, secretary assistant. And uh, I really liked this function because it helped me enter like the gates first of uh, the the Canadian legal markets and uh, allowed me to to work and to learn working with two different hats in one job, like the governance hats with the, the, the board and the operations one with the paralegal. And now I am a legal operations specialist within a beauty and personal care, uh, Canada-based manufacturer, uh, and the worldwide also. Oh, I love it. Oh, and I love Morocco. Uh, <laughs> in fact, I love Morocco this time of the year much more than I love Canada this <laughs> time of the year. Um, my previous few jobs ago, Canada, the company was based in Canada, and I refused to fly to Toronto between November and March because the turbulence is just way, way too much. Um, but really cool. So you mentioned you practiced law before you immigrated to Canada. What yeah. was the scenic route? What were you doing? Just curious about your experiences before getting to the job you are today. Yeah, of course. So uh, I was working in like like in the uh, uh, substantive uh, legal matters, like reviewing contracts, interpreting laws, uh, giving legal advices, like everything related to the practice of law. I worked in uh, in in two big uh, industries in Morocco. The first one was the ports one, like the harbors one. And the second one was the edu- superior ed- education one, like in the university. So so it was interesting, like it was interesting to practice law in, uh, in, in Morocco. And uh, I, I, I wasn't sure I will pursue this career in, in Canada because I didn't have an idea about how it's working here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, and yeah, I started like the the qualification process, but uh, I I gave up. I gave up to to pursue in something I really I really love doing. Oh, I love that. Um, I have so many questions for you. Of um, <laughs> so, what is? I'm just curious. You you had an opportunity to be in in the world of law in house in different countries. Um, I find differences between the United States and Canada, and most people tell me outside of those two countries that I'm just seeing 
shades of gray, but Morocco is a very different legal system. Just curious, as a lawyer, you know, or in both in terms of culture and practice, especially in house, what are the sort of biggest differences you see now that you had an opportunity to be immersed in both? Yeah, well, I, I like I won't be able to 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 tell you like about the the like the the substantive uh, legal work because I, I didn't had the chance, of course, to practice law here. But I will say that it's 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 so different, like. It's two different system, legal systems, like two different uh, jurisdictions. Morocco is a civil jurisdiction or hybrid one because it's uh, it's uh, it's religious and uh, and uh, and civil one. And Canada is uh, is a common law, so it's two is so different. And the uh, the process to requalify uh, takes so long. And uh, the practices are different. The, the way of thinking is different. The way of like the legal research, the way you do legal research is different. It's 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 so different. But one thing I I really like I was surprised about one thing is that the way legal departments are 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 managed is the same <laughs> in Morocco <laughs> over here. It's the same. And I was thinking, okay, so maybe the practice of law will be different, but the way we, we manage uh, a legal team gonna be the same. So so this is what I what I what I really liked about uh about that switch. <laughs> that's that's very interesting. Um Civil and common law, very different. Morocco, of course, has a religious part of it as well. Uh, so very different. But uh, <laughs> I like that we still manage the same way. I'm not sure that's a good thing or a bad, but let's just sort of um, it's good put thing. it out. <laughs> it's <laughs> reassure <to> me. <laughs> uh, we're backwards no matter where we are. I love that. Um, so you switched to legal operations. I mean, it sounds like part of it was practical because, you know, laws, practicing law is very jurisdictional. Uh, opportunity and it's it may be it takes a while to actually um, become a member of the bar whatever it means in that jurisdiction sometimes it's just easier to be in the legal community and then contribute in other ways and actually over time more satisfying but I'm just curious you made the switch how you thought about it why and then I guess you know how do you how do you like it <laughs> thank you thank you olga for this question because i often get it uh, from different parties and and i really love it because you know why the answer is never the same if uh, if you ask uh, all legal operations uh, professionals you won't have the same uh, answer uh, each of us have ha has uh, has a different background different story so my story is quite different because when i came here like uh, briefly when i came here uh, I had uh, I had uh, uh, my husband's uh, colleague who was a lawyer in, in Tunisia in uh, his home country and he was talking to me about the qualification process to become uh, a lawyer and I started the qualification process and down the road it, it was very it's not it was but it, it was different very different different for me and uh, the difficult sorry and complicated and uh, down the road i i started the legal design certification program where i understood and i discovered that there is there is other alternative legal careers so this helped me to change my mind because the process was difficult complicated so i i, I became more open about other uh, alternative legal careers and uh, and in this certification, I remember I, I met a, a person who uh, who is a legal project manager. And for me, for the first time, I was saying, wow, what's this like? project management okay legal projects how 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 can can this be done uh, within a, a law firm so i started to do my research then i then i saw then i saw different operations uh, um, uh, practices applied to the legal industry and uh, when i read about them i see myself in it and i and i remember one night i i told my husband i don't know what to do so should i should i do legal legal project management should i should i do process improvements and uh, and uh, because we moved to arawa uh, i i was looking for 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 a remote uh, position and this is how i discovered my current 
privileged position. I really liked the tasks mentioned, but I didn't know what is legal operations. You gonna you you will you will you will laugh about it. But I was thinking the term legal operations is something specific to the department where I will be working. I didn't have an idea that it's a, a field a legal field of parts and uh, and the. Uh, since I started my, my my hiring process, I become uh, more uh, conscious about like the importance of the, the work. And, and, and I say, OK, after seven years or I think uh, eight years, this is the job I wanted to do since day one, like being in the legal department, because I love uh, to work in the legal department, but not doing substantive legal work. So uh, so so I really I really. I was so happy because I found my way. I love it. You, you said a couple of things. You said, I, I really wasn't sure if I see myself um, in it. Uh, and it's a really interesting. A, a, a lot of suffering is from our blindness, effectively. Um, the, you know, you could have persisted and, and, uh, and gone through the process of qualifications, which is, um, you know, is not fun, likely in any jurisdiction. I've never heard a lawyer say, the most joyful time of my life was to sit for the bar exam in my jurisdiction. I can't wait to do this again somewhere else. Um, that is usually a form of torture one way or another, uh, which, you know, you can say some of us are attracted to this profession because we're good in some ways torturing ourselves. So sometimes the most obvious thing to us is like, well, let's do more of that. Um, but then, you know, seeing yourself in a different light, maybe opening your mind and envisioning contributing in a different ways that that's actually i sometimes say it's a little bit more enlightenment and i really love that you kind of went through that and shared that journey so thank you for that and you know as you found yourself through various constraints which sometimes clearly lead to innovation um you know now you're doing it remotely what is your focus because this legal operations thing is actually not a small thing it's a massive mm. massive thing it could be anything between finance technology yes. people, all kinds of stuff so it's a really term that is even wider than law of course and i'm just curious kind of how do you how do you find your niche your focus what do you do all day yeah thank you again olga because this question is is the answer to this question is very gonna be so helpful for 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 the for the audience uh, because I want like people who are like who still don't have a clear idea about legal operations that just to remember that legal op that when you are practicing legal operations you are not required to do every legal operations uh, practice area you you don't need to be a master in in all of them you're gonna have a focus of course why because depending on the, the the department priorities the department strategy that that should be aligned with the company or the the corporate strategy but to answer your question like my 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 focus is first overseeing a, a legal technology solution uh, second is the process improvements and because we are, uh, my legal department is pretty new, like it's uh, three, uh, three years old, and the, and, the, and the contract management. So these are my three uh, priorities for now. Uh, and I think, and I, and I believe that in, in a midterm, we're going to have another priorities and move to like the financial management, move the, and of course, I forgot a uh, first thing I did is to implement in uh, the, the, the KPIs for my, for the legal matters with my legal department uh, is handling. Oh, I love that. Um, I have so many questions for you. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. Um, we could talk about how one goes from practicing law to learning, you know, you know, financial planning, KPIs, technology. Those are not little things. Those are massive areas. Um, and, you know, it takes time to hone your, your, your craft um, in operating uh, those parts of, of legal operations. So I'm just curious, in, in that transition, um, what did you find particularly helpful? How did you learn? You know, how does one, you know, takes off the lawyer dress and put on an operation dress? Like, what is that process? 
Yeah, of course. The, the source of this transition, I will tell you why the frustration I was having, and I know that uh, many uh, lawyers have and legal professionals have with the way of working and the way of um, the way like our way of working, how we work. I, I find it a bit um, I, I won't say traditional, but it should be modernized. And uh, and uh, I mean, I think traditional is a positive word. I mean, dated is a little more judging, and last century is really expressing well, that idea in, in in a very judgmental way. So traditional seems like, or a classic way of doing, seems like a really more open minded way of describing the same thing. <laughs> No, no, you are right. So, uh, so yes, uh, uh, this is like I was frustrated. I was frustrated, like when I was in Morocco, uh, even here after working in uh, like my previous legal department. It's it's the way of working, and now the 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 the, the situation changed. Like legal departments have more pressures, have more constraints, have more objectives, have more business goals to uh, to uh, have more issues to to address. So we sh we should be like we I I mean the legal department. The legal department should be run like a business, completely like a business with with numbers, with the with the with graphics, with the, with the, like they should talk business. So so this is why I find the the legal operations very special because i i believe that um it's the pivot of the legal department and because again thanks to this function i i i I see and I can see this like it's happening now and it's going to be happen more even in the future. Corporate legal departments can can finally support the business more effectively, more efficiently, can be more focused on making decisions, making business decisions and uh, and uh, and and the result is that they're going to be perceived more uh, and consciously as uh, business and uh, strategic partners. And we, we, won't, we won't have this tag of department of no. So <laughs> this is why I really liked about this, this, this function. Yeah, yeah. I love using frustration as a fuel that propels me forward. Um, there is um, that it's a very powerful fuel, and if you channel it the right way, it really leads to some wonderful results. Um, let's switch gears a little and talk about um, the state of the of the legal ops, where we are, and where do you think we're going? What's your crystal ball prediction? <laughs> I like it. <clears throat> well, the, the current stage of legal operations is not the same everywhere. There is some countries where the level of maturity of uh, legal ops is more important than in another ones. But this doesn't mean that like these other countries won't have their their legal ops industry. Uh, one thing I am sure about it is, and I see it coming, is that. All countries gonna gonna implement uh, legal ops, gonna have their legal ops industry. But I see that the practice of legal industry will be a bit different. It it won't be the same because of of business culture or or, or priorities or or practices. It won't be it won't be the same. Like like we. We will see, we will know what it is, of course, but it's just the way we will practice it. It, it, it can be a bit different. Uh, I see this and, uh, and I'm, I am happy because even though we say that it's a relatively new industry, but it's so growing, it's growing fast. And uh, we see more, more, more GCs uh, conscious about the importance and benefits of, uh, of, uh, of, of this function. And, uh, and, and, and uh, for example, now we see Japan talking about legal operations. We see Dubai talking about legal operations. This is very, very, very good. It's a very good uh, statement. I, like I, I, I always uh, follow the the evolution of the legal operations st uh, state in 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 each country. I I love this. I love reading surveys and see where they are, how they are, like uh, what challenges they are addressing, and etc. 
So we have a few more questions and I want to make sure I talked about your adventures um, on LinkedIn. Um, and I, I love, that's actually, before I go, I go there, we have somebody, we have David um, sharing um, about, um, you know, well, what's good to see in legal ops market. Thank you, David, for commenting and, and how it's important function to manage risks um, and, and money and to allocate optimal resources. And, and by the way, I do participate uh, because this is the way you, you can be part of the conversation, which is based on my experience is a way to really get more out of the conversation. We have a few more questions left and I want to focus on your adventures on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you're, you're pretty active. You're creating some content. You're creating some really useful content, very thoughtful content that other people react and, and supplement, incorporate in their practice. Um, and helping really the community of legal operations that is very now global and 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 very um, communicative and sharing to really cross the digital transformation bridge together. So I guess my question to you is, um, what inspired you to be active on LinkedIn and you know put in so much effort in sharing knowledge and best practices? Of course, thank you again for this question. So uh, I have uh, so motivations for this. So, for example, the first one will be I, I love LinkedIn. I, I spend most of my time on LinkedIn and it's in, and it helped me a lot advance in my career and expanding my network. The second motivation is I love uh, the work behind the, the 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 content creation. I was always wondering how it's working, and I was always curious about it. And of course, I I am very passionate about my 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 work my, about legal operations. And the 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 biggest part and the biggest motivation I will tell you is that the, the current state we are talking about it uh, earlier. We were talking about it earlier is that the legal operations is a relatively new but growing industry. But I see because it's new and because we still don't have a standardized uh, practices, uh, uh, practice guidelines or frameworks. Uh, I know that clock, of course, I will like I will, of course, talk about it later. But I know that clock is doing it's putting too much effort in this uh, to help legal ops professionals. I just see that it's still and generally misunderstood, like misconceived uh, a little bit. And this is why I wanted to to have a touch in uh, or to have my my touch in, in the emergence of this field in the right way. So when you say in misunderstood and you use the word, you know, misconceived um, a few times, you know, what, what exactly I'm just curious, kind of, can you define that misconception? or where we are on the maturity curve, like what is missing for you? What is missing uh, for it to be a full-fledged function that is well-run, well-understood, with sort of clear KPIs, reporting, and all of that? Yeah, I think it, what is missing is is uh, is more education about it, and uh, more talks about it, like, uh, and, and not talks like, like, Talks just for talks uh, uh, <laughs> or fun or U useful stuff that propels us forward. How about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I see that we, because it's 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 new. We still don't know like how it will help effectively and in details. You know. We, for example, some legal professionals or some JCs, for example, they, they they know it's important. They see the benefits, but like they are they are a minority. Like there is a lot a lot of uh, a lot of other JCs or legal directors or CLOs or something who still don't don't see the, the this specific touch of, uh, of of legal operations in their team uh, and uh, and and also legal professionals who want to switch to this to this uh, function they still don't know how to do it why uh, uh, how to work on their strengths and weaknesses to better to better uh, make their decisions uh, 
and, and for example, I see, I personally see some some confusion because between some legal terms. For example, I see, for example, confusion between legal design, and legal operations, uh, between legal operations, uh, uh, or may, you know, it's just like it's a lot of <laughs> a lot of legal terms in 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 yeah, our head. Yeah, there, there is there is still I agree with you. There is still a lot of what I would describe as early days, right? And 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 sort of trying and dress for her and seeing what works and what doesn't. And I see people like you who are contributing content and best practicing and sharing as, as, as moving the industry forward. And um, I guess what else uh, we individually or collectively we can do about it to for the for this function to mature, for it to be defined more intentionally, for all of us to sort of succeed together. Yeah, it's a very good question, Olga. Thank you. As I said, education, education, and education, not only towards legal professionals, but also towards students, because the, the students are the, uh, the the future, like the future generation, and uh, and, and they should know uh, what is the the reality of the practice of business and law and technology and not uh, be only uh, focused on 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 law on the the practice of law so this is why i i i see the clock doing too much uh, work, excellent work on it, but I wish we can have more other clocks. Uh, they can be global, they can be regional, but uh, but I I wish I wish I can we can have more of them, and uh, and I I I wish education it, like I wish that legal operations and the 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 the, the, the link between business. And law or the business of law uh, is uh, is teach it to in in schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish a lot of the things I learned on the job I had an introduction to at least in law school. Um, definitely, definitely the case. I guess my last question is, what 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 is your plan? Um, how do you see yourself contributing and helping this industry to move forward and to share knowledge and to uh, to really make sure that it matures and becomes a, a well-regarded, well-respected path for any professional, including a lawyer, in the jurisdiction or from the outside of jurisdiction, um, and to be an active participant in it. Yeah, as as you as you know, Olga, I started two months ago creating uh, content on legal operations, and uh, and now uh, you are having me in your podcast. So this is a uh, this is a. Uh, this is very good. That means that I am uh, on on the, in the right path, and uh, I I wish like and I am looking for contributions in other forms, like in forms of articles, in forms of other podcasts or webinars, or or even in law and business schools to speak about the importance and benefits of uh, legal operations and uh, the importance of uh, managing and running a legal a corporate legal department as a business for 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 better results because because now legal i and and especially after covid-19 legal departments have 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 a lot of pressure have a lot of constraints and have a lot to do they have a lot to do and and they have to do it with with less so this is the 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 heart of the 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 legal operations is doing more with less or from less like doing more and more and more so and uh, I am, of course, and I am also looking to help uh, JCs and uh, and uh, and CLOs in everything related to to their uh, legal department operations. So this is like my 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 plan. I love it. Let's keep propelling ourselves through frustration <laughs> and education. I think that's a, that's definitely a pass forward. Sarah, thank you so much for joining. I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. We'll do it again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Olga. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for following me. And thank you for giving me the, the, this uh, special chance to, to, to speak about uh, a topic I really love. And, uh, and I hope to see you again. And uh, let's uh, do magic in the legal industry. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, let's do magic together. Okay, bye everyone. Thank Thank you for stopping by. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Notes to My Legal Self. Know someone who'd make a great guest? Let us know. Self-nominations are encouraged. They are an act of courage. Remember, the future of law is bright. Enjoy your in-house practice. It's an adventure of a lifetime. See you soon.